Welcome to the daily word for the season of Lent. Today's reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter eight, verses fifty-one to the end. Jesus said to the Jews, "Very truly, I tell you, whoever keeps my word will never see death." The Jews said to him, "Now we know that you have a demon." Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say, "Whoever keeps my word will never taste death." Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? The prophets also died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, "If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing." It is my Father who glorifies me. He of whom you say, He is our God. Though you do not know Him, but I know Him. If I were to say that I do not know Him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Your ancestors Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, "You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham?" Jesus said to them, "Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am." So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself. And went out of the temple. This is the word of the Lord. Who do you think he is? What is the worst thing that you've been called? We call people crazy all the time. In our worst moments, we sometimes call people names. But have you accused anyone of being demon possessed? The Jews arguing with Jesus did. You're possessed by demons. Verse forty-eight. In response, Jesus does not make a conciliatory remark. He makes an outrageous promise instead. He says, "Those who listen and obey His words will not just live a long life, but that they would never die." Verse fifty-one. Inevitably, the incredulous crowd asks, "Who do you claim to be?" Friends, here's the question at the heart of Christianity. Although Jesus's teachings offer some of the greatest ethical insights, at the core of the Christian faith isn't his teaching. Although the church has been enriched by its practices and traditions, the church wasn't born or sustained by them. No, the question that gave birth to the church and what sustains it is the question: Who is Jesus? So, who do you think he is? Jesus answers in verse fifty-eight. Very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus was claiming not only to be older than Abraham, but that he was the great I am Yahweh God. We might misunderstand what Jesus was claiming, but the original hearers didn't. We know that by their reaction. So they picked up their stones to throw at him. They thought that Jesus was blaspheming, so they wanted to kill him. Famously, C.S. Lewis summarized what our options are when it comes to Jesus's identity: either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. By making such an extraordinary claim, Jesus did not leave the option of being a great human teacher open to us. One could interpret him as being evil or demon possessed. One could accuse him being, of being a lunatic, or he is who he said he was—the great I am. This question, however, is not one you can defer to a historian or a philosopher. Before the transfiguration, Jesus asked his disciples, "But who do you say that I am?" Matthew sixteen fifteen. Through our text today, he's asking us, 
Friends, who do you think Jesus is? Whether you trust Him as your Lord and obey His words will determine your eternal destiny. Let us have a time of reflection. Who do people say that Jesus is? What are the outrageous claims of Jesus that prevent us from concluding that Jesus was just a merely human being? If Jesus truly is God, what are his words that we must obey but have been neglecting? What do you think Jesus meant when he promised that those who would obey him would never taste death? How does it transform your attitude towards death? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior and Lord. Thank you that he lived the life that we should have lived and died a death that we should have died. Thank you that because of him, we can live forever with you. Help me to trust and obey your son Jesus and his words in every way. In your son's gracious name, amen.